Hello and welcome to the Corporate Escapist TV show. I am your host, Christine Innes, and I'm really, really, really excited to welcome this very beautiful lady, Sharon Davies, with me today. So thank you for joining me, lovely. I'm so, like, as I said, I'm really excited because we've just had these most epic conversations and I just know that um, we're probably going to lose track of time, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, My pleasure. Um, My look, pleasure. I love it because the fact is that you've obviously transitioned from corporate going into your own business, but you touch on something that I think that a lot of people when they go into business is something that is of a little bit of an icky situation, you know, and we talk about sales and, you know, I just mentioned to you before that I'm good at selling other people, but not so good at selling myself. But I think also too, when you are an entrepreneur and, you know, you go into business for yourself, you really need to be able to learn how to promote yourself, but in a way that it's, it's not, you know, coming from that ego sort of side, but it's really that genuine side because you're really passionate about what you do. And, you know, you, that's why you go into business because you want to help people. You want to be of service. You want to, you know, make, obviously you need to make an income as well. But, you know, it is that. So I think we're going to have just a really great conversation of, you know, how you've transitioned, but also how, you know, when you go into business, how you can sort of turn that around and make sales a little bit sure. of fun as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's all about having a plan, you know, mm. and uh, I think that there's, when, when you do start off and it's about what is it, the product and the service that you are delivering um, and this is what, you know, um, I talk about with people is that what is it that is unique about you and your product and services in the market? And have you tested the market that people do want that? Mm. And that's something that's really, really important because I think a lot of people, when they do transition, they're not quite sure whether what they know um, is going to be for the market and get paid for. So it's, as Lauren says, you know, you've got to be well paid for what you do, you know, um, if you're an expert in that field. So it's really testing the market. I think that's the first thing. Ask the market and, and test it out with some clients. Find, find some people that you can actually test it with to make sure you're on point um, and do the research. It's one of my first steps that I always talk about when I do my sales workshops is the first step. Know your customer, know your target market and have a strategy have a plan yeah I think that's really important I mean I know with myself is that as I've you know gone into my business that obviously my who my ideal client has changed a little bit as well but it is also making sure that what I am offering people do need and that there is I guess either a gap but also to you know what sets you apart because I always go back and when I'm doing my coaching with my clients is that we are all such unique individuals and we need to be able to allow that to shine through because there is only one of you and that is what sets you apart from everybody yes. else. Definitely. And it's setting us, um, again, it comes back to what is it that you're offering? Um, and it is about your offering, your service, and it's about being real as well. Um, it's so important. Um, I think that, you know, coming from the corporate world, like you mentioned before, you know, 28 years in sales and, and had many different roles. Um, and I think it's, you take that expertise and that information, but it's what you do with it and how you deliver it and making sure that what you are offering is what you do. So what you say is what you do as well um, and back it up. And I think that there's a lot of information out there um, that people, it, it, it really is about being real with your services and what you're offering. That, that's probably the number one thing going from corporate to that and just taking a step back and test that market to know that you're on point and what you're offering is what people want because that's how you're going to get paid for it. Mm, yeah, definitely. And did you find that obviously, you know, you've got quite an extensive background obviously in the sort of sales, the marketing, you know, in the corporate you know, arena, did you find that that was a little different than sort of stepping into being your own business? Because I, like for yes. myself, being in corporate, you have got this big team behind you. You have, you know, so many other departments and all of that. But then when you're in business by yourself, it is just you and it can get a little bit overwhelming, you know, to sort of 
do all of like identify all those areas that you sort of talked about and do that research as well? Absolutely, I totally agree. Um, I think last year I hit that wall where it was like, I'm so, you, I was so used to having a sales secretary, a PA, a telemarketing team, a marketing like for go to market strategies and where I would come up with the concepts and go, right, let's test the market. We would test with a couple of clients and they go, yep, that's a great offer. And then my whole team behind me could then launch it. We'd have an event, we would put it. So when it goes, so that was a big learning for me last year of, oh, wow, there's just me. So I was doing business breakfast. I was doing workshops. I was, you know, I was working until, you know, midnight and um, it was just, yeah, I almost got burnt out. And then I had a few people go, Hey, listen, would you like some, would you like a hand or, you know, I'd really love to be able to help you love what you're doing, love your messaging. And you're so passionate about it. Like, and I went, yes, please. So I think that there, you go through that. Okay. I've left corporate. Now I'm doing my own business. What do I need to do? And I think that there, like, even under the small business um, advisory, like, there's a lot of, you know, a business plan and a template. There's a lot of information there that you can use, but we don't get told to go there when we mm. start up in a business. And I think that it's being kind to yourself. I think that's really important. But it comes down to also, like, time management as well. So what you did in the corporate space, I guess that discipline, and it's the self-discipline, that I really had to keep um, up to date with as well. So every day, like I have my planner, I have things written down on my calendar. Um, I'm a paper person as well still. I, I do have electronic and I do use my phone, but I find that I'm a very visual person. So when I've got things written out, it's like, yep, I've got my plan for the week. I'm, I know what I'm doing, but it's keeping that regiment I think was something that I needed to keep doing because I found that I was just doing so much um, and I think too it's when you're in business for yourself it's okay I've got to sell myself I've got to sell my services I've then got to do my social media um, and I'm a big advocate for LinkedIn I use that quite a lot because that's where clients know me for but I'm building my portfolio on Facebook as well and doing my business strategies and that as well for small businesses and helping them. Um, but it's just, yeah, it was a real, um, an eye opener. And I actually had to take, um, as I call it, checkout day and just go, okay, what am I doing? I need to just take a step out. Cause I was actually trying to keep up to it with the same things that I was doing in corporate. I was trying to do in my own business and it was like, hang on a minute it's okay. Like on my own boss, I can take a, a day out just to think about where I want to go and where my leverage is and where my purpose is um, and get back on track, which yeah, I had to do. Hope that answers the question. No, it does. And I think you hit on some really key things there, especially like, I mean, a lot of the time when we go into business for ourselves, we want a little bit more flexibility and we want to have a little bit more freedom. But the thing is, is that if we don't have that structure in place, we lose that so quickly because we're so consumed with doing everything. And the other part is, is that we get caught up so much in the, I guess, the day-to-day -day stuff and we forget to then take back and reflect back and allow our creativity and all of that expand for the business. So I think delegating out to somebody, I would highly recommend, I've just gotten myself a VA and it's the Yay! best thing <laughs> I've ever done because, you know, you can give those tasks that I don't, you know, my social media tasks, like on all that sort of stuff, I can do all the planning and show them what I want to write, but they can go out and they can do it all. You know, they can, you know, add people to the group, like all that sort of stuff. And they can now start doing all my bookings because I need mm -hmm. to be focused on what is, going to grow the business and I think that they're two really key areas that people when they go into business in themselves you definitely need to have structure because you also need definitely. to have time out otherwise you'll end mm. up you'll end up sort of going well why why am I doing this I'm still working the same amount of hours as what I am you know back in corporate and you lose that passion for it um, as well so I think, you know, you touched on some really, really key things um, there for people. And, you know, I found delegating very difficult because I'm like, I yeah. do like 
you know, this is my baby. This is what I've done. Um, but it is and something that, and that's, that needs to and, and that's the thing. It's actually finding the right people to work in your business. And I think that uh, something that I've learned also is that you can have a lot of people wanting to collaborate with you and wanting to work with you, but they might not be the right fit. And something that I have learned is that if you're going to collaborate with people and if you're going to have someone in your business, interview them. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, because sometimes people will come across, go, yeah, I'd love you to come and work with, love you to do this. So turn it around and interview them to make sure that they're the right person in your business, because sometimes you can make a mistake. Um, and, and I did last year. Um, I had some people in my business that were the wrong. I thought it was going to be the right fit and it wasn't. And I, it sort of set me back by four months mm -hmm. um, to six months to where I wanted to be. So it's sometimes it can be a really big learning curve and you can focus then on the wrong thing. So having a strategy plan and having structure really helps them with that. But definitely if you're going to collaborate with people and work with people, have them, make sure you have the right fit, but interview them as if you were going to employ staff mm -hmm. that you're going to collaborate definitely. Yeah, and VA I, is yeah. definitely the way to go because social media can take up so much time um, and it comes back to that self-discipline, um, you know, like, uh, and I guess that, you know, from the corporate world, I still do that self-discipline because it's a habit. I mean, 28 years in doing it and it's still a habit. I still get up at the same time, still go for a walk, still go to the gym, um, but it's what works for me, you know? Um, and then my husband will say to me, uh, what time do you call this? You're still working? And I go, yeah, but I just want to get this, just this last thing for this workshop done, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think also too that, you know, when you've had the corporate sort of career or, you know, you've been in that environment, you are used to having so many people around you as well. And I think what I'm trying to touch on is, that when you go into business, it can actually feel quite lonely. So you may yes. have people who want to collaborate with you and you grasp onto that because you go, oh my God, there's going to be people around and all of that. But you need to know, um, one of the big things that I'm so passionate about is values. And yes. you need to have your own values, but values for your business so that whoever comes and works with you to make sure they are in perfect alignment with that because they need to share that and remember that it's still your business direction that you want to go in. So remember that you are probably going to get a little bit lonely, but just remember that there are, there are enough people out there that you can work with as well that will still share your visions, share your values and that as well. And that's, that is absolutely really, really important. Um, it's, it's been ethical. Um, it's having integrity. That is so important and have the values of what, what your business is. Mm. Absolutely, Christy. Couldn't, couldn't agree with you more there, Christine. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, what, did you, what would you say has been one of the biggest sort of learning curves of, for you to go and transition from, you know, corporate and having that team around you to, you know, being in business by yourself? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I, th I think the big learning curve is that it's, it's okay to have a break. It's okay to have lunch break. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think it's being kind to yourself. That is probably the biggest, the biggest thing that I've learned is to be kind. And that when you do start off with your business, that it does take time and allow time to take place. Mm -hmm. I think that when we get into business, I think there's a couple of things that I've learned is that um, why are you going into business? What is the purpose? What is the passion? Is it the right thing for you as well? Because I think that, you know, um, there were times where I thought, oh, am I on the right track? Am I on the right point? But I kept getting asked about it all the time and, and consulting. So I think it, that would probably be the biggest learning is um, making sure that you're on point be kind to yourself, have a break, um, definitely um, meditate, breathe, definitely breathe. That was probably the biggest thing. Meditate before you start, you know, be self-disciplined. I think that's been the, you know, that's okay. Mm. I think that's probably been the biggest thing. Um, yeah. And yeah. also that 
I think on the is it's okay to ask for help. Like as an entrepreneur, there are you know um, there are people that can take advantage of that, but there's also there's some really good people out there that share information, um, and I think that's really like definitely reach out for people to help you. It's yeah. not always about money. You know, it's, it's about sharing and caring. It's like, um, I have a really good mantra is like sharing is caring. Knowledge is power, but it's what you do with that knowledge to help others. And it, it comes back in twofold. So that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. And I really that's love the that. Thing there. No, <laughs> no, I really like it because the fact is, first of all, being kind to yourself because it's a big leap of faith that you take on yourself and that is going to, you know, bring things up to the surface. So we're going to deal with emotions. We're going to deal with, you know, yes. self doubt, insecurity. So we need to be kinder to ourselves and just remember um, somebody gave me a really great piece of advice the other day. And I'm like, going, I had to look back at how far I've come, but I never really tracked the progress and I think if you need to track how far you're progressing, and it's not just about monetary things, it's about also your self-growth and your self-development as well, because you will grow so much more, obviously, being in business for yourself. The other point is that you touched on is, you know, there are so many people out there who want to help and support you. And find your tribe, find those people who get yes. you and really want to support you and, you know, be your cheer squad because I, I use, I, I talk about my family a lot, in, <laughs> but you know, they sometimes don't get what I do and, but that's okay. But I can talk to other people and they're like, Oh my God, I love what you do. Like I, you know, I get it. They're my tribe. And it's sometimes you need to move away from your family, move away, you know, from that sort of intimate circle and yes, look to people who, who are actually doing it, who are actually in business for themselves, who have done the hurdles, who have gone through the struggle, because they're going to really understand the emotions um, that you're going through the, you know, all those little, I call it, you know, your mean girl voice that's going to go off in your head and tell you all the things that you can and can't do, but you know, you can do it. So find your tribe, I think, is so important because they're going to be yes. those people that are going to inspire you, light you up and really encourage you to keep going. And you touched on that. That is amazing what you just said there, Christine, because it, it, it definitely is, is finding your tribe because, yeah, family don't, uh, I think family, even though they love you and they come from a position of love when they say things, but they don't understand why you're doing it and the passion. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy for them to say, look, just go get another job. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know why you're doing this. Like you, you're giving away so much of this and so much of that. And I said, but it's passion about helping others to have the success that I had, you know, to be able to do that. It, that is more rewarding, you know, and yeah, they, sometimes they don't get it. Um, I know I've had, and my family, my background of my family is that, my whole family's all in sales. So, you know, I have had a father who was a general manager in Myers and, and Walton's in Melbourne, you know, a sister that's, you know, been a state manager and in management and sales. And I have a brother in sales. So it's everybody is in sales. So there's always that, you know, around the table at Christmas time. So, so how much did you sell this year or how much did you earn this year? You know, and it's not, you know, it's like I actually trained people and, you know, coach people and they had success and that's my success yeah. you know so it, it's definitely for your tribe but it's yeah family sometimes don't understand it or I don't quite understand what you do no. really <laughs> so it's quite it's quite simple <laughs> yeah well I'm very into a lot of the woo-woo so you know the spiritual side of things and they are not and you know I accept yeah. that and I'm just like you know what I will still talk about it I will still show people you know what I do but I don't need to, I guess one of the things is that you don't seek their approval because, you know, if they're not in the business that you're in, then it can be quite difficult, you know, for them to grasp it. So don't be deflated by that. It's really one of the things I want people to know. Don't be deflated if your friends and family don't get you. So find your tribe that does and be surrounded by them because they're the ones that are going to, who have gone through, you know, building the business or, you know, all the triumphs and the pitfalls and all that that comes with it as well. 
Yeah, and I think that that's important. Um, as I, as you know, I've set up a, a Facebook group called Successful Leaders Growing Together. So it's exactly that. It's for business leaders, CEO, people that have started up, and it's sharing content. It's sharing expert tips and everything. So then we can all help each other um, and promote that. Um, because there's always something that you go, oh, how do I do that? You know, who who knows that? So hence why I started that group. Um, which is getting quite a big following, which is awesome. Yeah, and it's share. amazing. Make sure people go right. on. I'll put all the details um, for it because it is oh, a great group. You. And I think, you know, there are people out there that, you know, genuinely do care and do want the best for people. And I think that yeah. when you go into business, you will really start to see that, that it is not all about the money. It is, that no. is just a byproduct of what happens. And when you're passionate about something, that will all come to you and that's Definitely. you know just let people know that you know just be connected and just you know follow that passion um because it does pay off and i think gary v said i watched something the other day and he said you know there is no such thing as overnight success there is just no such thing Definitely not. Yeah. So it takes time and it makes you, Absolutely. you know, and you have to grow with the business as well. But I think that's, you know, super important for people to really get um, that. Yeah. It's not just going to be an overnight success. It does take time. I, and definitely. And I think that that's where a lot of people, when they go into business and when they start up and they've got an idea um, and it could be something where they've been made redundant and they've got, okay, now I've got money. Now I'm just going to, I'm going to go out and work for myself. I'm going to do a business, but they don't have the foundations. They don't have the alignments and the transformation and the evolution. It's like what I call fate, you know, it's, it's having those ground roots to get that going. So yeah, it's definitely, and it, it takes time. So if you're going to go into business and be an entrepreneur to earn money straight away, it, it's really like to have that success, like what Gary Vee says, I think it's really hard. You know, um, I listen to Mark Boris a lot. Um, I've actually met Mark a couple of times and, you know, as Mark said, you, you know, have a five year plan of what your business looks like, but, you know, also have an exit strategy at the end of it. And like what I always say to people, like, what does the business look like? five years from now, like you'll have your start, your growth and your end, but look at five years. What does that day look like today mm -hmm. in five years time? And then that helps you to then do your strategy plan, your business plan, because what does it look? So if it means we've got three VAs, Christine, <laughs> uh, you know, we have three VAs, if that's what it looks like in five years time or four, you know, um, but it, it's really working backwards. Um, I did a breakfast just recently, um, or a few months ago, and I had a couple of speakers there. And one of um, my clients was there, and they said, "You know what, Sharon? As a director, I, you know, and I'm running a company, and I've got employees, and this. No one's actually ever asked me, what does your five years look like now? And I need to start doing a plan. I need to start doing that, you know, for what it looks like for myself. And that's where I think a lot of people make the mistake is that they go, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then they get up and running. They go, uh oh, I didn't realize this. I didn't realize that. So, um, you know, and then as an entrepreneur, I think it's been organized. Like you've, you've then got your best statements. You've got quite a lot of things. It doesn't get explained to you when you start off mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. Um, you know, you've got to have a good account and you've got to have, um, you know, if you're doing contracts for people, you know, you need to have your terms and conditions and contracts done legally. Like it's, it's quite, yeah, it's quite interesting. So five years to now, what does that look like? Uh, I, I, like I worked a lot in project management in corporate. So, you know, obviously working backwards, that was something that we did, but I think it's really important because that's even what I teach with my clients in coaching is that we yeah. need to look to the future and we always want to be better in ourselves as well. Yeah. And it's the same in business. So it's about looking to that future and seeing, envisioning it, you know, you know, really embodying who that person is going to be because, you know, it's not just the business that's going to grow, you're going to grow. So you also Correct. need to be that person that is going to be in five years. So 
you know, it could be what personal development do you need to do? What, you know, way do you need to communicate better? Or what other skills do you need to learn to be able to get to that point in that five years that you need to do? Because we all want change. We all seek change. And mm. I think it's just a natural thing that happens. But when you can see it and you can visualize it, um, you know, I get excited over that because I think that, you know, you can start to go, oh my God, look at all these things that are possibilities. And then when you put the plan in it, um, you know, that's what makes it reality. I always say, you know, dreams plus actions equal reality. So if you've got the dream, oh, you can see that. it, yeah, do the action. Really that. That's awesome. And then yeah. you've got the reality that comes all into it together. So I think what you said is like really, really, really important for people to get, you know, think of the five years, work backwards of how you're going to go. And the other thing I just want to touch on quickly is what you said was when they see those, put celebrations in there. Absolutely. That, that's where it's about being kind to yourself and take a day out and go have lunch with your girlfriend. Yeah. Um, I have, a, I, I have uh, my dearest, one of my dearest friends, Karen, when I'm kind to myself, I go have breakfast with her on a Friday morning and it's like, it's our jam, right? And yeah. we might go clothes shopping as well, but, <laughs> but it's something that being quite and reward yourself the same way as what you would have done when you were in corporate. Same thing, like you need to be kind to yourself reward yourself and recognize of what you've done. And I think mm -hmm. something else you mentioned before, Christy, like um, I'm 16 months into the, into my company, you know, um, and it's even though last year was a really big learning curve and I had some, as I call them, uh, hills, actually mountains <laughs> that I had to climb over and it stopped me in my track, but it was still a learning and it's still, I had that growth. And I think that every year you have a growth. And I think it's also important. Um, one of my dear friends over in the States said to me, you know, so what holiday have you booked for yourself? Mm. I went, what? A holiday? N no, 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 Sharon. You need to book a holiday. Um, and I was, I was listening. He's actually um, doing some podcasts now. And I just went, you know what? I need to make that booking. So I booked my holiday for in November to go to the States and it's like, yep, done. Yeah. That's my goal. Yes, it is to go to the Stevie Awards Future Women's Conference in November, but I'll have a holiday as well. And that's what I'm focused on. So I think it's important that you do book out your time out. You mm. do have that recognition for yourself, but also plan a holiday and, and book it, go get some brochures. Like this is something I've got, like I've got, because I love New York. Um, so and hopefully I catch up with Ryan when I'm there. But it's like put brochures around your office of, and go, right, 12 months from now, that's the date, that's when I'm going and have it as your, as your goal, as your incentive for yourself. Mm. Um, that's something from the corporate space I used to do. We always had, we were very fortunate that, very, very fortunate that we had incentive trips. So this way it's this is my incentive trip but it's also rewarding myself as well yeah i think, I think it's really, oh look it's so it's, it's, oh. my husband wants to come and we're all saying no it's a girl's thing <laughs> oh but it's like you have to reward partners <laughs> yeah you what you do you have to reward the people that are there you know listening to you supporting yes. you and that and like even i said that you know your family may not get it but they're the ones that you know they do listen they notice things they they see the struggles and all of that that you go through so it is i think it's so important that we do set little rewards for ourselves and you know treat ourselves and take those breakfasts you know with your friends take time out you know to go and get your hair done like all those little things that you would have done when you worked in corporate do it for yeah. yourself because you've put the effort in you've you know given it everything and it's time to really reward yourself yeah definitely and I think that that was um, especially with your partners and that I mean you know, my husband sees me coming into my office, the door's shut. So he knows when the door's shut not to interrupt, but then sometimes I can lose track of time. And then, yeah, he'll come in with the watch going, what time do you call this? You know, I thought working for yourself, it wasn't going to be the long hours again. I go, I just got to get through these things. So, but it's also, you know, diarising time management, 
up and keeping that self-discipline. It's so important. Yeah, no, definitely. Totally agree. So as I said, like, I think we could probably talk for hours, but um, we'll have to wrap it up because I would love to have you back because I think there's so much that we can talk about, obviously, sure, the I'd next step of trans, like the transformation that people go through with stepping into the business and we can dive a little bit more deeper into sales next time. But what would you sure. say is one piece of advice that you would have probably given to yourself when you were still working in corporate thinking of, you know, leaving and, you know, going into business of yourself just to sort of maybe, maybe take the jump a little bit earlier or, you know, have that trust within yourself to actually go, you know, you know what you're doing. You've got this. Well, um, I think the, the, the unfortunate part is that I didn't have a choice of leaving because I was made redundant. Um, and I went through that in my career four times. So it's, uh, I think from a, um, a mental point of view, like getting my brain to go, okay, um, now I need to do this and have that structure. So I was very fortunate I was able to get another position. Um, I, think, oh, I think I would have done more research. I think that research is really, really important. Um, before going out into business. So I think that, I mean, I didn't have a choice. However, I think that if you are looking at going into business for yourself, an entrepreneur, go do a diploma of business management or business, understand what it takes to run a business um, and making sure that you've got the right strategy, the right product and services. I think that that would be my advice yeah. before transitioning. Like, And if you're looking at, you're leaving the corporate world to go and start your own business. Make sure you have all of that, your business plan, a good accountant um, and good advice before you go and, and look at a business coach, sales coach, like someone to help you with your business as you transition. Cause it is a big shock. You know, it really is that. And I'll, um, I shouldn't say a shock, right? That's probably a negative. It is a big eye opener um, to go. So I think that that would be, I would do more, more research on what it takes to have a successful business. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I love all of that. And I really thank you, you know, for your time today because it's just, Oh, my pleasure. You know, just so much information there. And, uh, you know, it is a big step for people, you know, wanting to transition. And um, I, I love talking to people, especially like you that, you know, have done it um, and, you know, are willing to share the information as well. So thank you so much. I'm going to put all, uh, yeah, as I said, I think we my could probably pleasure. talk for ages. So <laughs> it's just yeah, great. It's one of my attributes, right? Yes. Everyone says you talk a lot. It's one of my attributes, but hey, I've been sales, right? It's yeah. what I do and it's how I teach people. But um, it's something also not to be scared of too. I, yes. I think that's the other thing. Don't be scared of having a go, but just do just do all the planning, planning mm. beforehand if you can. Definitely. Well, um, I want to thank everyone for joining us in today. And I'm going to put all the details of how you can get in touch with Sharon below. Um, please make sure you reach out to her um, and also join her free Facebook group, which I'll put all the details below for it. Um, I thank you for everyone who's tuned in today for this episode of the Corporate Escapers TV show. I am your host, Christine Innes. And just remember to live life to the fullest every single day. And if you want to reach out, you can grab your free complimentary coaching call with me and follow the links below. So love and light to you all.